Hi, and welcome to the University of New South Wales, and in particular the School of Mathematics and Statistics. My name is Thomas Britz, and I'll be looking at problem 66 from the course of Math 3411. In this problem, we have to construct a finite field, in particular the finite field that we've got here from part A of the question. I'll leave part B and C to you. So we have some polynomials, they are binary polynomials, or the coefficients of the polynomials here are binary. And then we're looking at these modulus, this polynomial here, and that gives you a set of polynomials which then forms a field. The reason that it forms a field is that this polynomial is irreducible, and we can quickly see that by seeing that if we uh, test uh, 0 and 1, uh, evaluating this polynomial, we'll get in either case, uh, uh, 1 and, and 1. So neither 0 nor 1 is a root of this polynomial. So this polynomial doesn't have any binary roots. Therefore, it doesn't have any binary linear factors. And because the degree of this polynomial is 3, then it must be reducible. So we know that this is a finite field, and we have to construct it. And so what does construct mean in this case? Uh, that's a bit ambiguous. Uh, but the, the phrasing of the question is a bit more detailed in, in the actual notes. So what we could do here was write up this field as a set of linear combinations. That's the vector space way of looking at this finite field. So that would be the polynomials here of degree at most 2. So we have a2x squared plus a1x plus a0, where all of these coefficients are a binary, so they in Z2. So that's one way of writing it up, and we see that there are eight elements in the field, and they form a vector space, so this tells us about the additive properties of the, of the elements. So it, they, we can add and subtract them, you know, just like we can normal vectors in a, in a vector space. It doesn't tell us much about the multiplicative structure, though, of the field, so let's turn to that. For that, we need to find the root of this polynomial. So if we say that alpha is a root of x cubed plus x plus 1, then we want to try to use alpha, or possibly some slight variation of alpha, to generate all of the units of the field. Um, so we're hoping that alpha might be primitive, or if it's not, then we try to find something related to alpha, maybe alpha plus 1, to try to find a primitive element of, of this field, which will then give us the multiplicative structure of the field. So let's just see whether alpha might do the job. So we see from this that uh, alpha to the power of 3 plus alpha plus 1 is 0. So in other words, we know that alpha cubed is equal to minus alpha minus 1, and that's the same as alpha plus 1 because we're dealing with binary numbers. So, <coughs> let's have a little look. We've got alpha to the power of 0 is 1, alpha to the power of 1 is alpha, alpha to the power of 2 is alpha squared. Now, alpha to the power of 3, we can use this now, that's alpha plus 1. And we'll continue to find the powers here until we hopefully end up with alpha to the power of uh, 7 then we've got all of the non-zero elements of the field. So let's see whether we can do that. Alpha to the power of 4 uh, is equal to <coughs> yeah. the previous thing times alpha, so alpha squared plus alpha. Alpha to the power of 5 is equal to alpha cubed plus alpha squared. But alpha cubed was equal to alpha t plus 1, so that's equal to alpha squared plus alpha plus 1. Then we've got alpha to the power of 6, which is this expression again times alpha. So alpha cubed plus alpha squared plus alpha. That gives us alpha uh, Alpha cubed is alpha plus 1. So that alpha cancels out with the alpha that we get there. So that's alpha squared plus 1. Alpha to the power of 7 is going to be alpha cubed plus alpha, which is just alpha plus 1 plus alpha. The two alphas cancel out which leaves us one with 1. So indeed, by taking the, the uh, powers of this alpha, 
we did in fact get uh, all of the uh, seven non-zero elements of the field, so all of the units. So alpha was in fact primitive. So <coughs> um, let's just write that up. go, alpha is primitive, and in fact we've listed up the, the powers of alpha there um, <coughs> uh, as linear combinations of uh, 1 and alpha and alpha squared, and this tells us all about the multiplicative structure of, of the field. So for instance we could use this table uh, if we wanted to calculate some fractions for instance, let's say alpha Whoops. Let's say uh, alpha plus 1 divided by alpha squared plus alpha plus 1. Well, here we could just say that's alpha plus 1. Where is this in the table? That's alpha to the power of 3. Divided by alpha squared plus alpha plus 1. That's alpha to the power of 5. So that's equal to alpha to the power of minus 2. We can multiply by 1 which is also alpha to the power of 7. So alpha to the power of 7, alpha to the power of minus 2. That gives us alpha to the power of 5, which is equal to uh, alpha squared plus alpha plus 1. And there we've made our calculation. So these calculations are really easy once you've got a table like this. OK, now we also have to find out which elements of this field were, were primitive. Now, if you remember problem 61, where we're dealing with integers mod some, some number, the way to find all the primitive elements was just to find one of the primitive elements, and then you could find the rest just in terms of the powers of that primitive element as follows. So the primitive elements It's supposed to say elements there um, of this field here are just alpha to the power of i, where that i is co prime with the number of the units, which is everything except zero. So we have seven, uh, seven units. So that's the size of the field um, minus one. So number of units or number of elements minus one. And which numbers are they? Well, in this case, everything, because of course, well, everything uh, from one to six, because we've got a seven here, so everything is co-prime with seven. So in fact, everything is a primitive element, uh, or rather, every power of uh, alpha, uh, alpha one, alpha two, up to alpha to the power of uh, 6. So each of those exponents there, 1, 2, 3, up to 6, they are co-prime with 7. Each of these is a primitive element. So in fact, we have the primitive elements right here. So each of these six elements is primitive. Now that's a bit of a special case. In general, if we have a finite field, then we won't have just about everything being a primitive element. In general, uh, we'll have just, uh, just, well, if we count them, we'll have phi of, well, this number here, which is the size of the field, minus one. So that needs not necessarily be this number minus one. In this case it is, we've got six primitive elements, uh, which is uh, just seven minus one. But in general, this number could be different. Um, and then there'd be a different uh, type of uh, structure for our primitive elements. So anyway, thank you very much.